And as soon as they call a case, you, as expediently as possible, you move to the, for, to, the, to the forum up there in the front, and you say, in a loud and clear voice, Ready, Your Honor. You state your full name. I'm giving my appearance before the court in propria persona, which means in your own proper person. In this state, it's pursuant to Article 1, Section 13. I've appointed myself my own attorney, and I'm ready to proceed with my administrative and procedural matters. And at this time, Your Honor, may it please the court, I have a motion for dismissal with prejudice, failure to state a cause of action for which relief can be granted. And all of a sudden, the cop will go, especially if you wear a army jacket and you look like you're three sheets in the wind. The cop will lean back and go, oh, crap, we're going to get sued. I didn't know the guy was a lawyer. And then he'll start talking to the prosecutor, and the prosecutor will go, oh, God, it's you brought me. You brought me one of them kind. <laughs> the right to travel is a popular common law doctrine which states that individuals have the right to travel, including by automobile, with which the state cannot limit or monetize through licensing or fines. The basis of this doctrine is that individuals who are not being compensated for their driving, i.e., taxi driving, trucking, Uber, etc., are not legally required to obtain a driver's license, car registration, or insurance. This video does not intend to delve into the legal intricacies of this topic, but aims to explore the life of a man who is largely responsible for the popularization of this topic and subsequently leading many of his followers into legal turmoil. Richard John Champion, otherwise known as Carl Miller, was born on August 1, 1947, in Boulder, Colorado. Carl Miller is the popular alias used by Champion, with which he used online to spread his legal knowledge concerning a wide variety of topics, most notably the right to travel. For the purpose of this video, I will refer to Champion as his alias for simplicity. Here are some of the claims. Uh, I should tell you a few things about me, that I'm a prior service soldier. I served three combat tours in the Republic of Vietnam. I should tell you that I was a participant in the top secret project called Blue Book, and this all took place to totally top secret so that we wouldn't offend any uh, chains of command or any uh, presidential problems similar to what uh, happened between General MacArthur. Miller claims to be a highly decorated Vietnam war vet whose unit was the subject of the famous movie Apocalypse Now and the best-selling book Apache Sunrise. Miller claims to have been inducted into the top secret project Blue Book and also claims to have served under the famous general in Operation Eagle Snatch. Miller also claims to have studied law for 25 years and describes himself to be a quote-unquote constitutional scholar who delights in quote tying legal prosecutors in knots often winning the praise and respect of judges. Miller says he has an over 90% success rate. After watching many of his online videos I was intrigued by the man and I just had to know more. I delved into this topic, reading and watching anything I could find. Here's what I discovered. Miller is in fact a multi-convicted weapons-related felon with a long track record of legal troubles and no record of actually winning any court cases. Not only does Miller have a laundry list of weapons-related offenses, he also has a verified history of severe mental illness. On November 19, 1980, Miller was arrested and charged with the felony of carrying a concealed weapon. Miller was found in possession of a handgun, knife, and karate sticks. Miller asked to represent himself in the trial. The judge had Miller undergo psychiatric evaluation, and it is unclear whether he passed or failed. Regardless, the court did appoint him an attorney, and Miller did win the case. Miller was unsatisfied with the results and actually appealed his own acquittal. It is unclear why Miller sought to overturn his acquittal, but it is widely speculated that Miller was unhappy with the results of the psychiatric evaluation, which resulted in him being found innocent with no intent to commit the crime. The appellate court dismissed his appeal and remanded the case back to trial court. No mention could be found concerning this appeal, and it was assumed the case was thrown out. The result? I guess you'd call that one a win. On September 15, 1994, Miller and his lawyer sued Burger King for a personal injury, citing a slip and fall and food poisoning. A federal judge later remanded the case back to state court. The case was not further litigated. The state court terminated the case on October 26, 1994. On December 8, 1994, Miller was charged with five counts of carrying a concealed weapon in his motor vehicle. Miller requested to represent himself, and after the judge ordered psychiatric testing to determine whether Miller was competent enough to represent himself, Miller was determined to be at least competent enough to represent himself. 
On December 6, 1995, while representing himself, a judge found Miller guilty on all five counts, four of which were felony weapons violations. Miller was sentenced to five years probation, in which he was not allowed to possess weapons during that time. In 1996, Michigan State Police were searching for David Paul Darlin, a fugitive charged with the murder of a fellow militia member. Miller is said to be a known associate of Darlin and has also provided Darlin with legal advice and legal assistance. When police interviewed Miller about Darlin, Miller denied knowing Darlin or his whereabouts. These denials later resulted in Miller being charged with obstruction. After the interview with the state police, police secretly followed Miller in hopes that he would lead them to Darlin. On October 31st, 1997, police obtained a search warrant and raided the rural property of a militia member on whose property Miller lived on. In Miller's trailer, police found a plethora of weapons, including several long rifles, shotguns, a sawed-off shotgun, a handgun, and a large amount of ammunition. On March 4, 1998, Miller was convicted in a jury trial for possession of firearms by a convicted felon in possession of an illegal weapon. I am unable to locate more information regarding this case. While Miller was serving jail time for possession of weapons as a convicted felon, the state of Michigan diagnosed Miller with a mental illness and he was institutionalized at the Yilsipianti Center for Forensic Psychiatry. While Miller was incarcerated in the psychiatric facility, he filed a handwritten lawsuit in federal court against the governor official, Myers, who he blamed for his conviction and for the violations of his rights. Less than three weeks later, the judge dismissed the case. One day after the federal judge dismissed Miller's federal lawsuit against Myers, Miller filed an identical lawsuit to the one he had just dismissed. Except this time, Miller named dozens of other government officials. Five weeks later, the judge dismissed the case. On May 13, 2005, Miller was arrested and charged with carrying a concealed weapon. Miller was convicted and sentenced. The details concerning Miller's legal past are somewhat complicated and confusing to follow. Yet, it is apparent that Miller is a multi-convicted weapons felon. In 2019, at roughly 62 years old, Miller began producing a small series of YouTube videos where he took on the alias Charles Miller. In this series, Miller is claimed to be a highly decorated hero of the Vietnam War, a constitutional scholar, and claims to have a court win rate of over 92%. Shortly after, a follower of Miller assembled Miller's video teachings into a book which can be found and read online. It is reported that Richard John Champion, aka Carl Miller, died at the age of 72 on December 17, 2019. His obituary can be found online. It is worth noting the obituary describes Champion as a decorated veteran of the U.S. Army serving in the Vietnam War. As for the claims to his awards, I offer no comment. But it is also important to note that there is another obituary online which can be found for Carl Miller published in November of 2014, in which you can actually read comments from his supporters offering their support and condolences. As for the true identity of Carl Miller, there are legal documents which can attest to the veracity of the claims that Richard John Champion was his true legal name, and that Carl Miller is an alias by which he used. These documents also seem to indicate that Miller was homeless. As for my summary of Carl Miller, I will say this. Miller is a fast and smooth-talking individual who holds an air of confidence. It would be easier to believe him at his word. He is seemingly kind, funny, and very likable. It was for these reasons I chose to look deeper into the man, and I can say I was not altogether pleased with what I found. The argument can certainly be made that Miller is either a charlatan or mentally distressed. His long, drawn-out videos seem to indicate that Miller holds quite a large amount of illegal knowledge and his claims do seem to attest to that fact. As likable as he seems, and as much as I wanted his claims to be true, I simply do not put any trust into the man personally. It is always good practice to research into any claims before you confirm them to be true or false in your own mind. My conclusion of the matter of his reliability is not concrete and should not be taken as fact. I am not making any claims to the truth or fictitious nature of Miller's identity or the right to travel doctrine, but simply am shedding light into the true identity of the man in the video. If you plan to exercise any real or perceived rights concerning the teachings of this man and others, I highly suggest you use extreme caution and get your ducks in a row. More often than not, if you decide to go driving without a license or plates, 
you will be pulled over and fined. I've watched many videos online of people dealing with police in this matter, and many of them even get off with just a simple warning. Personally, I would attribute this to luck. It is highly dependent on the manner of which you present your argument and the discretion of the officer or judge that will dictate how your situation is resolved. Pushed me down in a mud puddle face first. <laughs> then he pulled me up. I said, you are a really good attorney. Somebody like Jerry Spence, except I know he doesn't work for slime balls. And he says, uh,